if a and b are any two sets then a relation from a to b is the subset of a cross b so if a relation r on a set a is reflexive symmetric and transitive if all the three relations are satisfied on the set a then such a relation is called as equivalence relation the set of all first elements of the relation r is called the domain and the set of all second elements of the relation r is called as the range hello dear students welcome to this session of basic mathematics class i am mr niranjan faculty department of mathematics vidyashram pu college the temple of excellence today in this section i am going to discuss regarding very very important concept that is a uh, relations okay then functions let us come to the first concept relation now let us consider any two sets suppose if a and b are any two sets if a and b are any two sets then a relation from a to b is the subset of a cross b that r is a relation from a to b suppose if a and b are any two sets if a and b are any two sets then the relation from a to b is denoted as r is equal to the subset of a cross b the subset of a cross b is called the relation suppose if a and b are any two sets for any two sets a and b let us consider any two sets a and b then the relation from a to b is the subset of a cross b that is r is a relation from a to b that is r is a subset of a cross b denoted as r is a subset of a cross b so if a and b are any two sets for any two sets a and b the subset of a cross b is called the relation and it is denoted as r is a subset of a cross b a relation r from a to a is a subset of a cross a and a set a has m elements if the set b has n elements then ab has m n elements the number of uh, elements in a and b is m n elements that means a cross b will have 2 to the power of m n elements so if a set a has m elements and the set b has n elements then the number of elements in a cross b is 2 to the power of m n the number of elements in a into b is m into n elements whereas the number of elements in a cross b is 2 to the power of m n so 2 to the power of m n subsets a cross b will have 2 to the power of m n subset so if there exists 2 to the power of m n relation from a to b then there are 2 to the power of m relations from b to a also so the number of relations from a to b is 2 to the power of m n so similarly from b to a is also equal to 2 to the power of m into n so if r is a relation from a to b and x comma y belongs to r then this is denoted as x is related to y x is related to y is called the relation that means if x comma y belongs to r so here in general for any two sets a and b the subset of a cross b is called the relation the subset of a cross b is called the relation for any two sets a and b now let us come to the domain and range the domain and range of a relation suppose if a and b are any two non empty sets not an empty sets for the relation also if a and b are any two non empty sets then a and b are any two non empty sets and r be a relation from a to b that is if r is the subset of a cross b if r is the subset of a cross b then the domain of r is defined as the set of all first elements of the ordered pairs a comma b belongs to r that means the domain is the set of all first elements of the relation r the set of all first elements of the relation r is called as the domain so the set of all first elements of the ordered pair that is the relation the set of all first elements of the relation r is called the domain and that is domain therefore the domain of r is denoted as a belongs to a such that a b belongs to r suppose if a comma b belongs to r then set of all first elements is called the domain similarly the range r is defined as the set of all second elements of the ordered pair a comma b which belongs to r that means the set of all second elements of the relation r is called the range and it is denoted as range of r is equal to b belongs to r such that a comma b belongs to r in general the set of all first elements of the relation r is called the domain and the set of all second elements of the relation r is called as the range that is the range and the domain of a function so if a and b are any two non empty sets then the relation from a to b is the subset of a cross b 
and the domain of the relation R is the set of all first elements of R and the set of all second elements of the relation R is called as the range. So, the domain is denoted as R is equal to domain of the relation R is equal to A belongs to A such that A comma belongs to R if A comma B belongs to R and similarly the range of the R relation R is equal to B belongs to R such that A comma B also belongs to R. Now, let us come to the inverse relation. What is an inverse relation? Let R is a relation from A to B, then the inverse relation of R is denoted as R inverse and is a relation from B to A, that is nothing but inverse relation. If, A, if R is a relation from A to B, then R inverse is denoted as R inverse, R to the power of minus 1 is called relation from B to A. So, the inverse of A is denoted as R inverse and is a relation from B to A. Suppose if R inverse is equal to x comma y for all x y belongs to. So, if x comma y belongs to R, then the inverse of this is denoted as R inverse is equal to y comma x. Now, let us consider for example, if A is equal to 1 comma 2 and B is equal to A comma B. If R is a relation from A to B is defined by this is the relation. What is the relation defined from A to B? A to B is given by 1 comma A, 1 comma B and 2 comma A, then the inverse of this relation is R inverse is equal to, this is nothing but A, A comma 1, then B comma 1 and A comma 2, that is all. This is called the inverse relation. So, A comma 1, B comma 1 and A comma 2 is the inverse of this relation and it is denoted as R inverse, okay. Now, types of relation, now very important one is the types of relation. So, there are different types of relations in which first one is the identity relation, identity relation, identity relation. So, let A be a non-empty set, then the relation I A defined by I A is equal to A comma A belongs to A, for all A belongs to A is called the identity relation on A. If A comma A such that A belongs to A is called an identity relation, then denoted as I A. So, you let A be a non-empty set, then the relation I A denoted as I of A is equal to A comma A for all A belongs to A is called an identity relation on the set A. Similarly, null relation or it is also called as void relation. Suppose let A be a non-empty set, then we know null set, null set is a subset of A cross B and hence this null set is a relation on A, this relation is also called as an empty relation or a null relation. Now, universal relation, universal relation. So, let A be a non-empty set, then we know that the subset of A cross A, A cross A is a subset of A cross A itself, A cross A is a subset of A cross A, that means hence A cross A is a relation on N on A, this relation is called as the universal relation. Though that is a relation A relation on a set A is said to be universal relation if A cross A is a subset of A cross A itself. If A cross A is a subset of A cross A and hence A cross A is a relation on N and this relation is called an universal relation on A. Now, let us come to the very important uh, types of relations that is this is very important one reflexive relation, reflexive. What is reflexive means? A relation R on a non-empty set A is called a reflexive relation if A comma A belongs to R for all A belongs to A. If A comma A belongs to R 1 comma 1, 2 comma 2, 3 comma 3, x comma x, y comma y belongs to R, first element of the set A and first element of the second set B are all same that is A comma A. If A comma A belongs to the relation, such a relation is called a reflexive. Now, let us consider one example, on a set A is equal to 1 comma 2, then a relation R from, a relation R which is a subset of A cross B, a relation R, now write on A cross A, what is A cross A? A cross A is equal to 1 comma 1, 1 comma 1, 1 comma 2, again 2 comma 1 and 2 comma 2, then a relation R which is nothing but 1 comma 1 and 2 comma 2 then this is called a reflexive relation because here this contains A comma A belongs to the relation R, A comma A. 1 comma 1 and 2 comma 2 belongs to the 
set. Therefore, this is a reflexive relation. That means a relation R on a non-empty set A is called a reflexive relation. A comma A belongs to R for all the elements A belongs to the set. Now, let us consider for example, if A is equal to A, B, C and R1 is equal to A comma A and B comma B, R2 is equal to A comma A, B comma B and C comma C. These are examples for a reflexive relations on A. So, yes, this A comma A and B comma B are the subset of A class A and since this is of the form A comma A belongs to R X comma X, Y comma Y. So, A comma A, same first element and second elements are same. So, A comma A belongs to R, B comma belongs to R, therefore R1 is a reflexive relation. Similarly, R2 is also a reflexive relation because A comma A, B comma B and C comma C are all belongs to R of the forum A comma A. So, therefore R1 and R2 are reflexive relations. The identity relation and universal relation on a non-empty set are called a reflexive relation. That is an identity relation and a universal relation on a non-empty set or example for a reflexive relations are all reflexive relations. Now, second one is symmetric relation, symmetric relation. Now, symmetric relation means a relation R on a non-empty set A is called a symmetric if A comma B belongs to R implies B comma A also belongs to R. That is if X comma Y belongs to R implies Y comma X also belongs to R, then it is called as a symmetric relation. Symmetric if A comma B belongs to R implies B comma A also belongs to R, then the relation is called as a symmetric relation. And the third one is the transitive relation. So, a relation R on a non-empty set is said to be on a non-empty set A is called a transitive relation. If A comma B belongs to R and B comma C belongs to R implies A comma C also belongs to R. If A comma B belongs to the relation R and B comma C belongs to the relation R implies A and C also belongs to the relation R. That is suppose if X comma Y belongs to the relation R and y comma z belongs to r, y comma z belongs to r implies first and last element x comma z also belongs to r. This is called the transitive relation that is if a comma b belongs to r and b comma c belongs to r implies a comma c also belongs to r then it is called as the transitive. If uh, a comma b belongs to r implies b comma a belongs to r then it is called as a symmetric. Suppose if A comma A belongs to R, A comma A belongs to R means then it is called a reflexive, reflexive, symmetric and transitive. So if a relation R on a set A is reflexive, symmetric and transitive, if all the three relations are satisfied on the set A, then such a relation is called as equivalence relation. So a relation R on a non-empty set A is called equivalence relation if it is reflexive, symmetric and transitive. A relation R on a set A is said to be equivalence relation if it is reflexive relation, symmetric relation and a transitive. If it is reflexive, symmetric and transitive, then such a relation is called an equivalence relation. Now, what is reflexive? X comma X belongs to R. What is symmetric? X comma Y belongs to R implies Y comma X also belongs to R. What is transitive? x comma y belongs to r and y comma z belongs to r implies x and z also belongs to r. If all these three conditions are satisfied, then such a relation called a equivalence relation. Now, anti-symmetric relation. So, a relation r on a non-empty set A is called as anti-symmetric relation. If a comma b and b comma a belongs to r implies a is equal to b. If a comma b and b comma a both belongs to the relation and if a is equal to b, such a relation is called as an anti-symmetric relation. Now, let us come to the first problem, take an example, first example, given S is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, state which of the following is a relation on S. Now, what is given here, R1 is equal to 1, 2, 2, 0, 3, 1 and R2 is equal to 1, 3, 4, 2, 2, 4 and 1, 4. Now, whether verify whether this R1 and R2 are relation or not. As we know by the definition of relation for any two non-empty sets A and B, the relation is the subset of A cross B. Now, we know R is the subset of A cross B, right. Here, according to this definition, R is the subset of S, R is the subset of S cross S. Since S contains the elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 
So, here what is given R1 is equal to R1 is equal to the relation is 1 comma 2, 2 comma 0, 3 comma 1. Since here 0 is not in the set yes, yes contains only 1, 2, 3, 4, 0 does not belongs to yes, 0 does not belongs to the given set yes. So, therefore, R1 is not a relation, is not a relation. this is not a relation because 0 is an entry here, but 0 is not included. So, this is not an example for a relation. Whereas, R2, let us come to R2. What is R2 contains 1 comma 3, 4 comma 2, 2 comma 4 and 1 comma 4. So, here this is what is given 1 comma 3, again 4 comma 2, again 2 comma 4 and 1 comma 4. So, therefore, R2 is a relation, this is a relation this is a relation R1 is not a relation R2 is a relation on the set yes that is it ok hope you followed right. Let us consider an example if A0 1 2 3 4 5 find the following relation from A to B. So, as we know that the relation R on a non empty set A and B is the subset of A cross B. Now, here what is given the set is yes A is given. So, therefore, the relation R is a subset of A cross A. And what is the condition given? X comma Y such that X Y is X is greater than Y. Now, let us write the Cartesian product of A and B first. Let us write A cross A. So, what is A? A contains 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 cross another set A 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Now, let me explain in detail. So, the A cross A here is, A cross A is nothing but write down the cross product, Cartesian product for this that is 1 comma 1, 1 comma 2, 1 comma 3, 1 comma 4, 1 comma 5 again from 2, 2 comma 1, 2 comma 2, 2 comma 3, 2 comma 4, 2 comma 5. Next 3 comma 1, 3 comma 2, 3 comma 3, 3 comma 4 and 3 comma 5. Next 4 similarly 4 comma 1, 4 comma 2, 4 comma 3, 4 comma 4 and 4 comma 5. The last one is 5, 5 comma 1, 5 comma 2, 5 comma 3, 5 comma 4 and 5 comma 5. So, these are the elements of A cross A. Now, according to the definition that a relation is the subset of A cross B. So, here the relation R1 is the subset of A cross A. Now, what is R1? R1 is given condition is x is greater than y. First number is greater than the second number. We cannot take this 1 comma 1, 1 comma 2, 1 comma 3, 1 comma 4, 1 comma 5 because 1 is equal to 1, 1 is less than 2, 1 is less than 3, 1 is less than 4, 1 is less than 5 we cannot take, we can take 2 comma 1 because 2 is greater than 1. So, here this is 2 comma 2, 2 comma 1, 2 comma 2 we cannot take, 2 comma 3 cannot be taken, 2 comma 4, 2 comma 5. Next we can take 3 comma 1 because 3 is greater than 1 and we can also take 3 comma 2, 3 comma 1 and 3 comma 2, 3 comma 3, 3 comma 4 we cannot take. Again 4 comma 1, 4 comma 2, 4 comma 3 we can take. So, here 4 is greater than 1. 4 is greater than 2, 4 is also greater than 3, 4 and 4, 4 and 5 we cannot take. Similarly, we can take 5 comma 1, 5 comma 2, 5 comma 3 and 5 comma 4. So, these are the elements of the relation R1. So, R1 contains all the elements in which x is greater than y, first element is greater than the second element. So, this R1 is a subset of A cross B. Now, you got an idea what is a relation? A relation is a subset of A cross A, A cross B here. So, this R1 is a subset of this R, therefore, this is the relation. So, this satisfies the given condition x is greater than y, first number, first element is greater than the second element. This is an example for a relation. Hope you got an idea now. Now, now, let us come to the next problem. If A0, 1, 2, 3, 4, find the following relation from A to B. What is that A R2? R2 x comma y such that x divides y. x divides y means y is divisible by x. 
Now, write, write down the relation R2 is equal to, what are the elements of A? We have A is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Another set, another set A, same set, A is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, okay. Now, what is the condition given? X divides Y. So, second element is divisible by first element, X divides so. So, 1 comma 1, we can take 1 divides 1. So, 1 divides 2, 1 divides 3, 1 divides 4 and 1 also divides 5. So, 1, 1 divides 1, 1 divides 2, 1 divides 3, 1 divides 4 and 1 divides 5. Now, take 2, 2 will not divide 1, 2 will divide 2, 2 will not divide 3, 2 divides 4, x divides y means 4 is divisible by 2. Similarly, 2 will not divide uh, 5, leave them, 3 will not divide 1, 3 will not divide 2. 3 divides 3, 3 will not divide 4, 5 and 4 and 5. Next, come to the fourth element. 4 will divide, 4 will not divide 1, 2, 3, it will divide only 4. 4 will not divide 5. Similarly, 5 will not divide any number except 5. So, this is the relation. What is the relation? The relation R2 is equal to, the condition is from A to B, from A to B, that is here. This itself is B, if you consider this as B, A to A or A to B, A is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, again B is also 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or we can consider it as A itself. So, X comma Y such that X divides Y, X divides Y. So, that means Y is completely divisible by X, second term is divisible by first term, 1 comma 1, 1 comma 2, 1 comma 3, 1 comma 4, 1 comma 5, 2 comma 2, 2 comma 4, 3 comma 3, 4 comma 4 and 5 comma 5. This is the subset of a class B or A class A is called the relation, okay, that is it, hope you follow. Now, let us come to the next problem. So, if A is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, find the following relation from A to B. What is that given? A is equal, relation R3 is equal to x comma y such that x comma y such that y is equal to x plus 3. Now, what are the elements of A? We have A is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 another set same set or let us consider this as b itself 1 2 3 4 and 5 what is the condition given r is a relation r is equal to x comma y such that y is equal to x plus 3 now let us write down when x is equal to 1 when x is equal to 1 what is the condition y is equal to x plus 3 when x is equal to 1 y is equal to 1 plus 3 is 4 so, first set element is 1 comma 4. Second, when x is equal to 2, when x is equal to 2, y is equal to 2 plus 3, that is equal to 5, the second is 2 comma 5. When x is equal to 3, what you will get? y is equal to, y is equal to 3 plus 3, 3 plus 3 is equal to 6, 6 does not belongs to the set A, right. So, we cannot take, so therefore, the only elements of the relation R is equal to 1 comma 4 and 2 comma 5, see 1 plus 3 is 4, 2 plus 3 is also 5, so that is it, these are the elements of the set, okay, this is called the relation. Now, let us come to the next example, so if A is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, find the following relation from A to B, what is that, x is equal to y, so same, what is A, A is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, Another set A, consider the same set A or B as 1, 2, 3, 4, then A to B or A to A is defined by R is equal to X comma Y such that X is equal to Y. So, the relation R is equal to X comma Y such that X is equal to Y, X is equal to Y, first element is equal to second element, 1 comma 1, 1 is equal to 1, 2 comma 2, then 3 comma 3, 4 comma 4 and that is it. So, this is the relation 1 comma 1, 2 comma 2, 3 comma 3 and 4 comma 4, x is equal to 5, that is it. This is the relation R, which is a subset of A class A or A class B. So, let us come to the next problem. If A is equal to 2, 3, B is equal to 3, 4, find the number of relation that can be defined from A to B. So, listen here. Suppose if a set A contains m number of elements and the set B contains n number of elements, 
set A contains M elements and B contains N element, then the number of relations from A to B, the number of relations from A to B is equal to 2 to the power of Mn. This is the formula. The number of relations that can be defined from A to B is 2 to the power of Mn. So, here number of elements in A is 2, number of elements in B is also 2, number of elements from A to B, the number of elements from A to B is equal to N of A into N of B, 2 to the power of N of A into N of B, that is 2 to the power of number of elements in A is 2, number of elements in B is 2 to the power of 4, 2 to the power of 4 means 2 to the 4, 4 to the 8 is a 16. The number of relations from A to B is 2 power 16. So, just keep it in mind the number of relations, number of relations from A to B is always equal to 2 to the power of M and where M is a number of elements in set A and N is a number of elements in set B. Okay? Now, let us come to the next problem. Find the domain and range of the following relations. So, here R is equal to 1 comma 2, 1 comma 3, 1 comma 4, 1 comma 5, 1 comma 6. As I told the range and the domain. So, find the domain. The domain of this function, domain of R is the set of all first elements of the relation. Here the first element is 1. So, therefore, the domain is 1. That is it. Set of all first elements of the relation is called the domain. So, here the set of all first element is 1. Similarly, the range, range of R is equal to set of all second elements of the relation. Second element of the relations are 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. That is it. So, here in this relation, set of all first element is called the domain. Domain is equal to 1. And set of all second elements 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 is called the range. That is it. Hope you followed. Now, let us come to the next problem. What is given? If r is equal to x comma y such that y is equal to x cube, x is a prime number less than 10. So, we have to write the prime numbers less than 10 and the cube of those numbers. So, what is given? r is equal to a relation x comma y such that such that y is equal to x cube and x is a prime number less than 10, x is equal to, so the prime numbers less than 10, 2, 3, 5 and 7. Now, write down the relation r is equal to first 2 comma 2 cube, 2 to the 4, 4 to the 8, 2 comma 8, okay. Then next element is 3, 3 comma 3 cube, 3 cube. 3 cube is equal to 3, 3 is a 9, 9, 3 is a 27. Next, 5, 5, 5 cube, 5 cube is equal to 5, 5 is a 25 into 5 is 125, 125, okay. Next element is 7, 7 cube, 7 comma 7 cube, 7 cube is 343, 343. So, these are the elements of the relation R, that is it, okay. Now, what is to write the domain, domain of R is equal to, therefore, domain of R, domain of R is equal to set of all first elements of the relation 2 comma 3 comma 5 comma 7, this is the domain. And what is the range? Range is the set of all second elements, range of R is equal to set of all second elements of the relation, that is 8, 27, 125 and 343. This is called the, the domain and range for this function y is equal to x cube where x is a prime number less than 10. Okay, that is it. That is all regarding uh, today's session. Let us meet with uh, the different concept. Let us meet with the problems on equivalence relation in the next class. Thank you. Thank you very much.